Good morning and happy Sunday, friends. We are so delighted that you have joined us here at Newport Presbyterian Church this morning. A chance to rest, a chance to be filled up again for all that this next week might hold for us, a chance to be reminded that we are loved and we are enough, just as we are. Um, and nothing tells you that quite like having our two nephews for one whole weekend. That's right, smiling in the back, that's good. Uh, Katie and I uh, went down to Portland and picked up our nephews, Lucas and Marcus, and have had a wonderful, very full weekend. <laughs> but it's been great to be reminded of the joys of youth and the energy we can find when we are together. Um, and that is the same hope I have for us this morning as we come to worship. Uh, we are so delighted to be together this morning. I do have just a few announcements for us as we get started today. wanted to remind you all we continue to work on our accessibility here around Newport. Um, so we do have printouts of our worship slides. If uh, up here is hard for you to read, we have large print printouts every single week of our slides. We also have hard copies of our announcements. If you are a person who likes to hang them up on your fridge and remember all the good things that we have coming up. Uh, we have accessible parking spots, we have accessible seats, um, we have hearing assistance as needed. So if you are joining us or you know folks who are uh, trying to figure out a way to join us, please do let us know if there's any way that we can be a help. We care very deeply about making sure everyone has a space here at Newport. And speaking of spaces, I uh, wanted to point out we do have our next installation of the Subversive Saints project. A couple names out there that you might recognize. So just an encouragement uh, today or throughout the week if you want to stop by. Um, these are current day um, unordinary saints and people that help remind us of the beauty of community. There are definitely some names that I didn't always um, know beforehand, so take a moment and enjoy those saints in our atrium installation. 
And lastly, just wanted to uh, remind you that we will have our May congregational meeting, which will be to elect our elders, deacons, and nominating committee for the next year. That'll be on Sunday, May 26th, right after service. Um, we do have the option for folks to join us on Zoom and vote that way. Uh, we do know that this is Memorial Day weekend, uh, but we are looking forward to having those who are able to join us and celebrating the next season of leadership here at Newport. Well, friends, those are the announcements that I have this morning. We're so glad you're here, and I'm going to hand the microphone off to someone taller and uh, louder than I am. Uh, Bill Iverson's going to give us a moment for mission this morning. Thanks for being here today. So our Thriving Communities group has been discussing how people find the church. It's kind of interesting. Uh, and so I authored uh, last Tuesday's Take Action Tuesday that came out to everyone in email, somehow became uh, entitled Where's Waldo, which is probably appropriate. Uh, if you go and try and find our church on any search, whatever you may use, um, it sometimes can be difficult to find unless you put in Newport Presbyterian Church, and of course Presbyterians can find a Presbyterian Church. Uh, but there's other ways to find churches, other terms people use. I've tried things like my gauge has been a uh, progressive church near Factoria, and I can't find us. <laughs> and, and so that's what this is about, is encouraging people to use the words they may use to try and find our church and see what happens. Uh, you'll eventually find it and uh, maybe go and leave a review. That's the ask in our Where's Waldo, is to leave a review about our church. It's something our thriving communities group can only do so many. There's only a few of us. We can only leave five reviews, and that's about how many reviews we have for Newport Presbyterian. Many other churches have 10 times, 100 times more. And so we're asking people to uh, go out there. Google's an easy place to find reviews similar to how you might review any business, any restaurant, any place that people go. Leave a review. Leave your own words, the words that you think describe Newport Presbyterian, and um, help our thriving communities review this church, and help the world find us. Thank you. Please join me in this responsive call as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Like spring breaking through winter's power, God's resurrecting power breaks into our lives in surprising ways. Like the vine that supports blossoms and fruit, God's word holds the church in place. Let us worship God who makes all things new.
Please join me as we confess our sins against God and one another. God of love, we fail to love one another fully. Forgive us for ignoring to love and worship you, for ignoring the needs of others and not following your ways. Forgive us for seeking praise from others, yet failing to encourage them in their endeavors. Forgive who we have been, O oh God, and root our lives more deeply in your love. The writer of the Gospel of John records that God is love and that God's perfect love casts out fear. Those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Claim your hope in this good news. God's perfect love abides in you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Good morning. Good morning. You're going to move the bunny, huh? All right. So, some questions for you this morning. I know. What do you do when you need help with math? I struggle. Um, I probably search it up on the web. Oh, okay. What do you do, like, when you're back in the salad bowl and something goes awry and you need help? Look to my dad. <laughs> oh, you panic first, and then you ask your dad. Okay, all right. Um, what about on the soccer pitch? Things aren't going right. You're not quite sure what to do. What do you do? I don't know. I... Do you call for a sub, maybe? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Um, what about when you're working on an essay and you need help? I look to my aunt. Oh, oh, okay. All right. All right. Um, what about when you're cooking in the kitchen? What do you do when you need help? Uh, I don't cook in the kitchen. <laughs> you don't, like, look at a recipe or anything like that for help? Okay. Just file that away. You can in the future. <laughs> okay. What if you were out driving and something happened with the car? What would you do for help? Call my parents. Call your parents? Or AAA, okay. So you have resources, right? How did you learn about those resources? Um, from living. <laughs> from living, okay. So a, a more serious question for you. What if you're reading the Bible and you need help? Like you don't get it, you don't understand it. What would you do? I'd probably also search it up. Oh, like use the internet and Google it, okay. There's some good stuff out there. What if the power was out and the cell phone grid was down and so you couldn't search it up? What would you do? I'd find ways to figure out my, the solution. Okay. What are those ways, do you think, that we can use when we want to figure out what the Bible says and we don't have technology to help us? What if we were sitting here and I read today's scripture, like Greg and Pastor Kelly will do in a minute, and you didn't understand it. What would you do? I'd ask a question. I'd talk with the people, talk with the community. Ooh, talk with community and ask a question. Good. That's exactly what an Ethiopian man does in the Bible today. In the Bible story, he's reading the Bible, and he doesn't get it. And along comes a guy named Philip, and Philip says, yo, you need some help? And instead of acting all proud and saying, no, I got it, he says, yeah. And so he and Philip sit and talk and read, and Philip explains things to him. And because of that, the Ethiopian man understands what he's reading, and most of all, he understands that God loves him. And I think from all of this, I mean, you've got tons of resources, right, for whatever you need help with. This room, like you said, is also a resource. And so especially when we want help understanding God's word or understanding God's will for our lives, we've got resources, and I think that's part of today's message. There's always help available. Will you stand and help me pass the peace? All right.
Oh, heavy sigh there. All right. <laughs> and we'll say, the peace of Christ be with you. Will you please stand and share God's love with this community?
Please pray with me. Holy Spirit, move in us and among us as we listen to the scriptures, read and interpret it. Open our minds and hearts to receive the living word so that we may be transformed to live as your Easter people. Amen. Our first scripture reading for this morning is 1 John chapter 4. Listen now for a word from the Lord. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we lose, love one another, God abides in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, he, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God, so we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this way, or us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in the world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate a brother or sister are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. I promise I didn't specifically choose that scripture text on the day I had my nephews, it just worked out that way but I think it's a good reminder for all of us to love our brothers and sisters and siblings and friends, which is what leads us to our second scripture text for this morning is from Acts chapter 8. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, get up and go toward the south to the road that goes from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this, like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. 
in his, humili- in his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom may I ask you? Does the prophet say this about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, there is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. Friends, this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. In 1997, Derek Webb and his band, Cademan's Call, wrote a song about a bus driver. The song walked through a typical day of a hypothetical bus driver waking up at 3.30 a.m. to make sure he's there on time for passenger after passenger who barely even notice he's there. This is his 14th year on the same route, this hypothetical bus driver. And he knows Judith likes to be early to the bank, and Charles deserves a raise for how hard he works in retail. And the chorus of this song just repeats, I'm just a bus driver, what do I know? It strikes me that our Ethiopian eunuch this morning is probably singing a similar tune. Commentators remind us this man lives in suffering. Suffering widespread stigma in Gentile and Jewish society as permanently emasculated. Suffering mutilation so intense he's unable to procreate suffering a life of slavery all so that he might be less threatening to members of the royal court. God forbid they get taken advantage of over anyone else. Suffering a lawful cutoff from full, partici- from, from full participation in the covenant community. So of course, this eunuch's first response to Philip's perhaps demeaning question of do you realize what you're reading, is, well, I'm just a eunuch. What do I know? Not too unlike our hypothetical bus driver. However, once we overcome what I read as notes of sarcasm and Sue read as kindness, both are valid, (laughs) we can more fully appreciate what the eunuch is reading an evocative passage from the prophet Isaiah about a scorned, shamed, sheep-like figure to whom justice and generation, which can also be translated as offspring, were denied. Who is this passage talking about? The eunuch needs to know. After a lifetime of never seeing himself represented in stories or culture, a lifetime of never fitting in, a lifetime of never imagining a future that actually included hope, he happens to read this image from the prophet Isaiah. We cannot miss how important this reference is, friends. In today's world, it reminds me of the important rise of children's books about black girls' hair, or the new Gerber baby that has Down syndrome, or seeing same-sex relationships highlighted in coming-of-age movies and TV shows. Sesame Street even has a new character who's experiencing homelessness. 
Even though some people are currently arguing that Oscar the Grouch living in a trash can might have Lily beat on that point, I digress. <laughs> it matters to see yourself represented in the world. And it certainly matters to see yourself represented in Scripture. Here at Newport, this idea of being seen and valued as your whole self informs so much of what we do. In worship, in education, in mission, we care deeply about celebrating the stories of the marginalized, the left out, the least of these. That's why we have a team that checks in on our safe parkers throughout the week, making sure they have what they need. That's why our One Parish, One Prisoner team writes letters week after week, flooding our incarcerated friend Deidre's mailbox with stories of love and connection. That's why we have a pride flag in our lobby and gender-neutral bathrooms in our atrium. We strive to follow Jesus in our friendship with those who are left out and left behind. And this work matters because this is not yet the case everywhere, right? And while I agree with Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. that the arc of history bends towards justice, we are still waiting for a lot of justice to roll down. It's certainly been on my mind this week as our United Methodist siblings have been gathering for their global conference to consider, continue deciding the future of their denomination largely split over the issue of inclusion of LGBTQ plus people in ministry. And let me tell you from personal experience, it doesn't matter how much confidence you have in your identity as a beloved child of God, when utter nastiness and true hatred starts flying at meetings like those. Watching the live stream of the special general conference back in 2019 solidified my call to leave the United Methodist Church and all the work that I had done in their ordination process because I knew there was no way that I could be safe in a place that allowed harm like that to be done. And I say this because this is why our work matters. Who we are what we do, what we say, how we show up matters. Our choosing love, even when it's not easy, even when it's not popular, even when it's costly, matters. It's because God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Because there is no fear in love, and instead love casts out fear. Because this kind of love and inclusion the Spirit of God calls us to in the same way that it called Philip to a wilderness road, where there was no way he would run into people to share the gospel with. This is how lives are transformed. I love this story from Acts because it's the eunuch who initiates everything in this encounter. They are the ones who are reading Isaiah as they're traveling. They're the ones who ask what this passage means. They're the ones who ask to be baptized right here, right now, because I can't wait one more second without being covered in that water of grace and love. I believe that they can do this because they know in the depths of their being that they are loved. We can have boldness in life and in love because God first loved us. We can hear that over and over and over again in the book of 1 John. And sometimes the repetition is annoying, but also... I think it's important because we forget. We need to hear it over and over again that we are loved and God is love and therefore we can love one another. 
And the more we live into that truth for ourselves, the more those around us are transformed too. I can only imagine as Philip is snatched up and deposited cities away, which is another topic of big questions for a different day. He's now preaching the good news to more people in a different way after his experience with the Ethiopian eunuch. This gives me hope that we will all continue to transform until everyone's at the table, all are fed, and no one is left in want. After the song Bus Driver came out in 1997, Derek Webb found that he had a complicated relationship with that song. It was a marker of a different time and a different theological framework that he just didn't quite fit into anymore. I know I've had some moments and memories like this, signs of things that I've outgrown, not sure how to find a space for them in a new life and a new perspective. So when his band came together last year to do a 25th anniversary album, the band thought it would be fun to play a little joke on Derek. In their fundraising, they set up different rewards for different levels of giving, encouraging people to help them get to their goal. And they said, if we reach this really high, nearly unobtainable number, Derek will write a sequel to Bus Driver. Derek was on board knowing that this was nearly unreachable. And so he put it on their site and he went to sleep. By the time he woke up, the level had been reached and his task was before him. Through his work and transformation over 25 years, he was able to write a rather beautiful sequel that I see as an encouragement for all of us in our life, in our love, and in our ministry. He writes, so today it's 40 years since I pulled out of here. I always knew there'd come a day when I'd have to pump the brakes. I love this job. I loved every morning stop and every single story I picked up along the way. It went fast and it went slow. It was a long, long way to go. But trust me when I tell you good things come to those who wait. Charles and Judith never did, not one middle school kid because I always showed right on time. Oh, I was never late. It may not sound like much, but you never know the lives you touch. By nothing more than showing up, even on the days you feel so small. Oh, it turns out it all matters after all. It may not sound like much, but you never know the lives you touch by nothing more than showing up, even on the days you feel so small. Oh, it turns out it all matters after all. Thanks be to God. Amen. Occasionally, uh, I get a request uh, for a song. Uh, people want like to sing something that they remember or that's just a favorite. And this one came from our sister Doris. And um, I found out when I brought it in uh, this week that uh, it's not done here very much. And um, actually, it's very possible that many of you don't know it. Uh, in other churches, it's the thing. Uh, and it's an old, old standard. It's one of the hymns that my grandmother would have asked me to play for her. Uh, this is Where He Leads Me, I Will Follow, and it's really easy to sing uh, and remember. Uh, you'll probably uh, walk out of the building singing it your, to yourself today. I have no doubt. Um, you may remain seated while we go through this. <laughs> Thank you. 
While the season of Easter is unfolding, the gifts of spring emerge around us to remind us of God's generosity in Christ and in creation. As we present our gifts to God, may, we, may our generosity reflect God's goodness to us and our hope for abundant life in Christ Jesus. We remind you that you are invited to put your written prayer requests in the offering plate as it goes by as a way of participating in our community. If you consider Newport your church home, we invite you to share an offering. If you are visiting with us today, please do not feel obligated to give as you are our guests. Ushers, please come forward. Generous God, we bless you for your gift of life renewed through Christ's love. Bless the gifts we offer so they renew our hope in the world you love. In the name of your greatest gift, Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, amen. Well, friends, one of the ways we continue to show up with and for one another is through the prayers of the people. This is a time that we pray at the table, that's Christ's table, as a reminder that all are welcome here in times of joy, in times of sadness, in times of excitement, in times of boredom. In all things, we are welcome to this place. So I invite you in a spirit of togetherness and community to pray with me. Lord Jesus Christ, we draw near to you in prayer this day, trusting that your love changes lives and your resurrection brings hope into the world God loves. You walk with us through every challenging time, and we give you thanks for every sign of hope. In a world that is often on edge, where the future can seem so uncertain. May we abide in your love. 
We ask that you bless the ministries and mission activity undertaken through the staff and the funding provided by our church. We thank you for each faithful servant that gives of themselves in these challenging days. Bless them with good health and courageous commitment and equip them to reach out in love and respect. May they abide in your love. Loving and listening God, we bring you now our prayers for others, friends and enemies, neighbors and strangers alike. We pray for people who are struggling with illness, loneliness, grief, or sadness. May they abide in your love. We pray for people in countries and communities where it is not safe to live out their faith or express their views openly. May they abide in your love. We pray for victims of discrimination and acts of hatred and those who fear violence day by day. May they abide in your love. We pray for truth tellers and advocates for justice. May they abide in your love. We pray for churches and local organizations and businesses struggling under the pressure of economic challenges. May they abide in your love. We pray for our families, friends, and for ourselves, as well as those in the news whose situations tug at our hearts. We especially pray for Teresa, prayers for her finding stability in her health and housing. We pray for a family member struggling with depression. We pray for Olivia, who's having her first hip surgery on Wednesday. Oh God, may these people and all of us abide in your love. Lord Jesus, we believe that you hear our prayers and you will be faithful to our requests and concerns. And so we pray together with confidence the words you taught us, praying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Sing this song with us. It's a very happy song, and I probably uh, go out of here feeling quite good after you sing this.
Well, friends, no matter who you are in the story, if you are Philip or the eunuch or the person driving the chariot that wasn't even mentioned, (laughs) you are covered by God's grace and invited to abide in God's love so that we might share our love with all those around us. As we leave from this place, you're invited to leave as you're ready. Um, You can stay and listen to the postlude or go ahead and walk out and join us for coffee hour in the atrium. And as we leave from this place, may you know that Christ goes before us to plan and prepare our way. The Holy Spirit walks beside us as friend and companion for the journey. And most importantly, the God of redemption persists above us calling and reconciling our lives now and forevermore. Amen. Mm